Oh my God, there's an ant. It's about to crawl over the lens. Stay away, buddy. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's not a harvester ant either. Who is this guy? Get out of here. What's going on, y'all? I'm Connor O'Reilly with Team Lone Star Discs, Team OTB Discs, Discology, Gorilla Disc Golf, and Chump Chalk Bags. And we are three tournaments into the Disc Golf Pro Tour season. This past weekend was the Open at Austin presented by Flight Factory Discs. And many of you might know, but I'm from Austin, right here where we're sitting. You might not recognize this spot, but you will soon. Some of you OGs might really recognize it. And if you got that eagle eye, you'll notice exactly where we're at. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of come on here today and talk to you guys about how the Open at Austin went this past weekend and just a little bit of the things that I want to work on in this off week as we approach Texas State Championships two weekends from now. First off, I just want to thank everybody who went out to the Open at Austin to spectate and all the hard work and crew out there that got the course ready for us to play. It was definitely an improvement on last year's course and I'm excited to see how it continues to get tweaked over time as I hear the Disc Golf Pro Tour is kind of taking that tournament as their own in the coming years. So they're really going to have a lot of say on what happens with the track and what little adjustments are made to make it better, more challenging, and yeah, just safer overall. Because uh, some of those tee surfaces, as some of you guys might have heard, were a little bit lumpy at times and they definitely had spots that needed improvement. But um, overall, we got lucky with the weather last weekend and oh my God, there's an ant. It's about to crawl over the lens. Stay away, buddy. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's not a harvester ant either. Who is this guy? Get out of here. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. Little tournament recap. Round one was very windy. And the thing that really was tough about that wind was we had a opposite direction wind all three, four days of practice that we were out there during the week. Come tournament time, wind flipped opposite direction. So a lot of holes you can maybe throw your putter on in practice, all of a sudden turn into overstable fairway shots. And little differences like that um, coming into the game plan round one definitely threw a lot of players for a loop. Uh, a lot of players adjusted well. I know myself, definitely a couple spots where maybe it, maybe it was troublesome, but throwing wise for the most part, other than my four out of bounds that first round, I threw the disc pretty well, commanded where it went off the tee. And uh, yeah, my putting, I just did not commit. Some of you might've seen my Instagram post. I think I had like nine putts between a meter inside and outside the circle where I didn't connect. So I gave myself a lot of opportunities off the tee and just didn't commit on the putting green day one. So that was uh, something that I really focused on for day two, just wanted to be boogie free, try to shoot solid. And I did, I shot a seven down, even with a one down slow front nine, I was able to kind of get it going on the back and shot a solid round that moved me up the leaderboard, put me in position to have another solid round that would take me into that low end of the cash line. But uh, final round, just once again, wasn't committing on the putts. I think I had like five, four or five missed putts inside the circle. Um, and the conditions were pretty scorable. We did have poor weather that got rid of three of the holes that we have been playing. Some of the easier birdie holes out there. So I didn't have those kind of low hanging fruit to rely on throughout the course. Had to go out there and try to score on some of the harder holes. And yeah, my main takeaway is just uh, committing to my putt a little bit harder, putting a little harder, flatter, and uh, just spending more time on the putting green throughout the week as I approach the event. I'm, I'm one of those players that if I'm not getting my extra hour in a day on the putting green or whatever it might be to help me find that rhythm, stuff like that can definitely affect me and make me feel like I'm maybe not taking advantage of my opportunity to be one of the best in the world. And that's something that I really wanna make sure I'm working towards every day. So today we're out here at what is Old Hole 18 at Roy G. They're currently building a short course that's gonna happen on this side and it's gonna be more beginner friendly, more kid friendly, while still having a lot of fun for the more experienced players. So we're now gonna, now gonna have the newly redesigned 18 across the river or the creek. And then over on this side, on the city side, you're gonna have the more beginner friendly course. So I'm really excited to see how that one turns out and to come show you guys, play it on the channel, showcase, maybe run a little ace, ace run out here. Um, but I stopped the basket today and we're just gonna work on some putting. I really just wanna dial in my putting over this off week as we head into Texas States because I feel like throwing wise I've been throwing towards the top 30 or 20 most tournaments that I play um, so far this year but I just got to stick my putts any any rounds where I'm making putts I, I feel like I'm putting myself in contention so that's gonna be my main focus 
heading into Texas States is just to get those hundreds of reps up a day to where that muscle memory knows nothing but putting the disc in the basket when pedal hits the metal. Thanks again to everyone who gave the love during Austin and who was out there to, to watch and support, said they watched the videos. Uh, really appreciate you guys' feedback. And we're just gonna get some reps up. I got a little marker over at 20 feet and I'm just gonna try to make as many in a row as I can from 20 feet. I think uh, it's a pretty critical distance right there in that distance where it feels simple enough, you should get it every time, but also far enough away to where you have to have the mind focused and it makes you think sometimes, depending on the wind, depending on the conditions. Let's get to it. If you already forgot though, we're putting V2 blue bonnets. Only option there is. My main goal really for this session is not only obviously to make every putt I look at, but just to keep my mind sharp and focused. Don't let it stray away from the task at hand. Because the more you can win that mind battle every round, the more you play close to your potential. And that's our only goal, truly. Physically, my game feels and is at an all-time high. Just gotta stay focused out there. No. First miss. Reminding me that this is not a gimme range. Like our champ Nick Les said last weekend, he just tried to make sure he stayed in the moment, make every shot the most important you've ever thrown. That's truly all we're looking for on the golf course. That was one of those misses. Felt decent. Chains didn't really accept it. 50-50. Hard pill to swallow, but also he threw a decent putt. You probably never see me without a hat. It's cause I got poison ivy on my head, y'all. Texas spring, it's pretty mean. All right, I gotta center these up. Make sure I'm not relying on the high chains. Hit the sweet spot from 20, don't just make it. Hmm. Obviously I gave a good pep talk to myself there. I also did try to aim lower. Maybe I over adjusted. I think a big thing with this weekend's putting that I retrospectively was thinking about was, uh, I feel like I just putted with a little bit too stiff of a wrist. Didn't start with my disc on top of the, or my hand on top of the disc enough. If I'm already in that loaded wrist position, I think I was just a little bit too, too rigid with it and didn't get enough spin because of it. 
when you got variable winds, the more kind of flat spin you can apply to the disc, the less affected you are by that wind. I also feel like I didn't use my legs very well in rounds one and three. Maybe partially due to the... Okay, I'm moving that thing back up. Why did I move it down, y'all? Low misses, not acceptable. I tried to adjust the aim, that was foolish. There we go, that was a good rack. I think every day between now and Texas State start, and I'm gonna try to make at least 200 circle one putts. Circle two is every day, if I have extra time to work on, will be kind of a bonus, but so much of putting for me is just feeling sure about those 25, 20 footers to where I have more freedom to run the long ones, and that's where I find success in circle two is having that supreme confidence in circle one. So if you're at home working on your circle twos every day and you're not seeing a ton of improvements on your putt, maybe you should just dial in the simple things, work on the fundamentals. Wow, rude. I'm going back and forth between being the talking guy and the focus guy, so I'm focusing up these next couple racks. Zipping the lip. Stupid. As everything's starting to warm up around the world, and you're starting to get those sticky fingers on the course, go try out a chump chalk bag. You might even find one with some lucky clovers on it and a CO logo, help you get a grip. And let's be real, no one wants to be a chump. That's why you gotta put your chump chalk on because it's actually anti-chump. Where'd that tailwind come from? Oh wait, it's been here for a few minutes now. The wind has been shifting a little bit from the left side, different versions of it right now, which is good. I don't wanna just set up in one spot and have the same wind look every time, so it's good to kinda of have to read it as it's happening. Cause you can't always predict the wind on the course, it's gonna shift on you. in a row to the right, that's not good. There's actually a local club here in North Austin called the Hill Country Heisers, who tonight at Redhorn Brewing are gonna have a putting league. By the time I post this, it's gonna be too late, but next week you might be able to go out there. Every Tuesday they run a putting league at Redhorn Brewing. A lot of fun, I know GK Pro has done a skins match out there that I got the pleasure of playing in last year. So you can check it out there. 
And we're gonna go shoot a little vlog while we put. It's kind of getting our practice in now so we can go later. I'm hoping my buddy Ezra Robinson's gonna be in the crowd. See if he wants to get in on some vlog putting action. If not, maybe young Colton Wallace with his flawless pudding. We'll see. All right, there's five in a row. Time to run it up. Time to get a streak going. Make a putt. I was getting ready for that 10th in a row to go in and tell you guys about how working on the basics is helpful because I've already seen a improvement in the flight that my putter's coming out in throughout this 30 minutes or so I've been out here. And uh, yeah, I think it's good to keep your sessions to a kind of manageable amount of time. You don't need to putt for five hours straight. Your body's gonna probably be wrecked and I don't know how effective it's going to be after that first hour even. So I think hitting 30 to 45 minute sessions is pretty ideal when it comes to putting time. Enough time to find that rhythm, but you don't want to stay there too long to where you're starting to overcompensate and your swing's changing. But if you feel you're keeping your focus through a two hour session, well, good on you. And you do you, man. Okay, that was high, that was scary. Okay, okay. And y'all are seeing kind of what muscle memory will do for you. Beginning of the session, my putts were a little more wobbly. I wasn't quite having the dialed in wrist mechanics that I'm now coming out with. A little bit better spin because of those mechanics finding their way. So much of sports is finding a rhythm with your body and how you swing it. And as much as having a perfect swing is gonna be great, if you're a player who knows how to find the rhythm and the timing, even with a perceived flawed swing, you're gonna have success. It's all about the mental, really. And sometimes the physical, physical can kind of overcome the mental, but it takes a lot of muscle memory to achieve that and a lot of work hours every week to keep your body in that position. Oh, I thought I missed it. There's that muscle memory setting in. Or was it the luck that you'll get when you buy some discs at LoneStarDisc.com right now? Maybe a stack of blue bonnets yourself so you can get some reps in. And don't forget to use that code CLOVER20. It'll give you that luck we're talking about. It'll save you 20%. I'd say that's pretty lucky too. Wow. Poor focus there. It's all right. If you're still watching this video, don't forget to hit that like, drop a subscribe, 
Let me know in the comments, what do you think about when you're putting? Do you have a mantra? Do you have a kind of checklist that you go through before you throw a putt? What's the way you approach the lie? How do you handle your mental setup putting wise? For me, I kind of like to make sure I set myself up, visualize the putt going in. I'll do one pump fake a lot of times to make sure that my back foot's not gonna slide out and that my footing is proper. If I'm not feeling comfortable, maybe I'll do another pump fake, kind of focusing on just the form I wanna throw with. And then from there, try to really hone in my vision on one chain and take a breath in as I come down, out as I go up with the putt. And I kind of have a three little, three little words I tell myself. Focus, eyes, follow through. For me, if I can kind of do that every time, it just gives my brain something to think about. Focus, eyes, follow through. And it helps keep those outside thoughts away. Because as good as you are, you're gonna have outside thoughts creeping. But if you can maintain focus, even amongst some of those thoughts at times, ideally, you're gonna play pretty good. A little shift to the headwind. Oh, yep. All right, that was a good, good putt. A little firm, but <laughs> oh, and I adjusted off a make. That's dumb. Or off a spit out. Never adjust off a spit out, y'all. Keep putting. If the basket doesn't like it, well, it needs to learn to like things better. That's my, that's my fault. All right, I can't forget the straddles. You know, let's throw a few of those for wrap up this session. We're not sharp on that last putt. Just kind of blurred out. Just in case, with Calvin's basketball putt anniversary coming up, Texas States, we gotta get one ready. Oh, what? Oh, out the bottom? That second one was in, we'll count it. All right, let's try to knock out 10 in a row, wrap this session up. Get ready to go, try to dominate that red horn putting league now that I got a rhythm. I'll try to show my guy Ezra Robinson how to do it. Or just play my game good, you know? Let the rest fall in place. See, there I go. Play your game, bud. All right, to end the session, I gotta make 10 in a row. I think it's important, no matter how long your session is, to create a small goal to finish with so that you don't feel like you're cheating yourself and ending short of when you need to. 10 in a row, or I can't leave. and spit outs against myself on this this rack as well they got to be clean makes even though that one was pretty arguable i'd say that's a good spot to hit basket thought otherwise All right, one more full rack, and we're out of here. Most important putts in my life, right here. Just 
a little more chalk. So I don't have any second thoughts about being a jump. I'm a chump. Just is what it is. No, you know what? I just love putting, so. I wanted to throw some more. Those left side ones are scary now. Okay, use the legs and the tailwind. It's gonna drop. As the round wears on, as your session wears on, making sure you use your legs to follow through is gonna be imperative. So that's gonna be my focus on this set. Flipped up to that headwind on me. Yep. Gotta read it quicker than that. This is freaking it, yo. No more putting. 10 more, that's it. Woo, thank you, Les. Oh my God, that was the sketchiest rack ever. <laughs> oh, we made him. What's that old saying? No pictures on the scorecard? Debatable. Too many cameras out nowadays to say that. <laughs> Five more. Sometimes hitting small goals and adding up a bunch of those is how you get those big ones. While well, 10 putts in a row feels like a small goal, every step matters. And sometimes you gotta take baby steps. Thanks you guys so much for joining today. That was a little bit of a kind of a recap of the Open at Austin and then just a bit of informal putting maybe. Some of you guys benefited from some of the stuff sprinkled in there and I really just needed to get into a session myself so thanks you guys for joining don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to pick up some blue bonnets if you want something that holds up dependably in the wind has a nice medium tall profile in the hand smooth beadless action comes out of the hand clean try yours out at lonestardisc.com or OTB discs all the ways to support me are in the description below so go check those out I really appreciate you guys for joining and for always sharing your feedback let me know maybe a video that you guys want to see soon during this off week. And uh, don't forget to check out that Red Horn Brewery putting vlog dropping soon. Maybe before this one, maybe after. Depends what kind of excitement we got. Stay tuned to find out.